and it almost looks like here they're like bringing in this huge net and they're casting the net you can see all the way down there and i guess that's how they trap the fish i guess buggy <laughs> That means good morning. Today we're on a little bit of a road trip. Small road trip, but bringing you guys along and I have some really cool things to show you guys or tell you guys about today. told you guys before I'm bringing you guys with me we're actually going to a place called Singaraja it's about maybe 20 minutes away uh, kind of a big city in the north northern part of here in Bali but that's not what the main goal is my main goal of this video is to get 17 17 of you all to join me I'll explain I guess I can explain a little while I'm at a red light. Um, so many of you guys watch the videos, you guys watch my videos, and I love you guys are here. I love you guys supporting me, and I love you guys, how much you guys inspire me as much as you say I inspire you. But one thing I wanna share is that, you know, what I do is, all I really do is share my story. And I got to this point where, where I really want to teach you guys, show you guys, share with you guys, how to share your story. And one question you ask is like, Luke, where do you always get the, the coconuts from? Where do you it's hard to find it. When you guys come to Bali, finding coconuts, I literally am on my way to, as I told you, Singalaja, but just coming down this way, you'll see them, side of the road, places where you can stop for a nice early morning coconut. Okay, actually, that place was closed. I had to stop here just to show you guys how beautiful Bali is. Like, come here, I'm gonna show you. One thing I can tell you is when you guys are traveling and you're going from point A to point B, remember, the magic always happens point A to point B. Don't get so caught up that you miss the beauty of going from point A to point B and you forget about the magic. officially in Singaraja. seems like good a place as any. Looks like I got here too early, everything's still closed. But the thing I wanted to share with you guys is, the thing I wanted to share with you guys is, I think it's so important to tell your story. Share your story. Share your light. Shine your light. You guys are all here, you guys come here, you watch the vlog, 
And the one cool thing and why I love this so much is because I don't, most of you all here don't like me because of what I do. And we live in a world, things have changed where people kind of see you for what you do. Before as a pro athlete, people liked me because I was a pro athlete. When I was just traveling, people would like me just because I'm a traveler. But when I started sharing my story, that's when everything really changed. Because then people got to know who I was. And people began to like me for who I was, not what I did. And there's a huge difference. And there's this like misconception that you have to have all this stuff ready. You need to, you need to have your life figured out. You have to have all this stuff before you can start sharing, before you can start talking about yourself and sharing your ideas and beliefs. And it's just not true. And it's things like things like that. Hello, Pagi. The one thing I wanted to share was, you know, when you can share your story and you don't have to have things figured out before you share it. You know, I find that there's such a beauty in sharing, sharing the figuring out part. Like me, I'm trying to figure my life out and I share it. And it's that little moments of sharing that figuring out part that people relate to because everyone's trying to figure it out. Everyone's trying to discover like, what's my way? What's the best way to do it? So what I wanted to do is I wanted to create a program live again. You guys who are in Project Alpha, you guys already know what's going on. You guys sent me an email for that special deal you have. But I wanted to create something that was live with me. I wanted to create an interactive experience, something where it's live with me, where I can answer all your questions. At the same time, teach what it is that I did. You know, um, and oh, abuela coffee. That's Spanish for grandmother coffee. <laughs> um, but I wanted to teach you guys like the energetics and how I was able to do it. So the program is called Project Star. It's gonna be about five sessions with me, live with me. Um, anyone who's in Project Alpha, let, leave people, let me, let, leave in the comments how your experience was there because I really wanna be able to share with you guys so you guys can start telling your story. I think the most powerful thing that we have is our story. You know, we think we have to say all these other kind of things, but it's your story. And the reason why your story is so powerful is because when you tell your story, there's emotion behind it. It can't be replicated. When I tell you guys that, man, you know, at 17 years old, I, I broke my leg and, you know, I didn't know if any schools, all the schools who were gonna take me, they dropped me. Um, at the time, my girlfriend broke up with me. Like a whole bunch of stuff happened to me. and. That's, that's a very personal story. And because it's so personal, there's emotion behind it. And because there's emotion behind it, people feel that. And that's where the change is created. Bagi. And when you can start to share your story and share your perspective, people, people who are on that same frequency as you, people who are on that same frequency come and join your tribe. And before you know it, as you share your story, share your story, share your story, you've got this whole tribe of people who are there for you. And when you're happy, they're happy. When something bad happens to you, it feels something bad happens to them. And they, you bring this like tribal concept and you know, I just love it. And I wanna teach you guys how to do it. Project Start, all the details of everything is linked below, but please reach out to me privately if you have more questions or leave a comment here. Um, reach out to me on Instagram or on on via email and I'd love to have you guys like I say I want to get 17 of you guys in this program with me uh, project alpha was so fun with all of you all who were there and I want to do it again but not on not teaching you guys how to share your story but to and start doing things but to break down all the barriers that has made it so you haven't started yet and that's what I really want to share today but we're in Singaraja maybe gonna do maybe a little bit a little bit of exploring And you guys can see here in Bali, always watch where you're walking. And I must say living up here in the north is pretty cool. There's literally like no tourists up here. No, none. Here in Singaraja, I've been here a few times. Spend a lot of the days here. Hello, bye-bye. <laughs> I've never seen, I have not seen one tourist, one Western person being here. In Lovina, yes, but here, no. But we're gonna try to find a cafe or coffee shop so I can get to work on this video and bring you guys along. It wouldn't be a trip to Singaraja if I didn't stop at the, if I didn't stop here at the port. But one thing I'll say is, 
when I did my research on Singaraja, it said that this used to be like a really booming town. Like it was like the main port for like, I think thousands of years, but definitely hundreds of years where everyone was at. And this is where everyone, the entrance into Bali was. And as they built an airport and Denpazar and all that, everything kind of shifted down to there, which kind of left this place, not in ruins, it's not ruins, but it left it kind of like almost a tad bit, a small bit like abandoned kind of, and almost like forgotten, especially from the local people. I mean, the especially from the tourists, because I haven't seen like any tourists here at all. It's all, all local people, 100%. And uh, it's good to see that they're like cleaning the beaches out. That's nice. Pagi. But even here on the, even here on the beach, I guess they're sweeping up the beach, but even here it's like, uh, yeah, not forgotten, but yeah, it's just different. And by the way, people who are like the beaches in Bali, you know, some of the beaches, this is the, this is the reality of some of the beaches here. But I guess I'm gonna walk around here and explore a little bit and um, kind of share this whole environment and area with you guys via um, another way of sharing content. really see the whole the whole I don't know the cycle almost because it's almost like there's people pushing the boats out to the sea and then the boats are coming back from the sea and they're dropping off the fish and the people are here with buckets picking up the fish and I guess they're gonna go to the market and then they'll sell it and it's like a whole almost like a whole system that they got here but I will say the the beaches are not uh, you would not want to come here without shoes on Definitely would not want to walk here without shoes. But let's get a move a little bit closer. And it almost looks like here they're like bringing in this huge net and they're casting the net. You can see all the way down there. And I guess that's how they trap the fish. I guess. Bagi. <laughs> and it's almost like they got a whole huge system set up here. These people are moving it, but there's also, there's like somebody in the water, like going and securing it under. I don't know if you can see that. It's a diver in the water. Way out there. Wow. Yeah, but this isn't one of those beaches, like I say. Unless you're a local, I would not walk here without uh, without shoes. kind of just blending in here watching but I must say it's pretty fascinating watching them catch the fish all kinds of fish little big <laughs> small fish big fish everything wow say as I'm kind of finishing up shooting here I must say it almost feels like this used to be like a town that was really kept up and was really packed all the time that's the vibe that I feel like it, it was and I don't know if it's just because of now with you know not as many tourists here or if it was always like this but um, yeah it looks like a town that just needs a little bit more a little bit of TLC some of these shops here been closed for a long time now of course i'm recording this in 2021 so we just come off of 2020 so that could be a reason why but um 
yeah, it just looks like uh, needs a little bit of TLC. I like it here. It's very chill, relaxed, not a lot of people, not no tourists, but just needs a little bit of TLC. A little bit of TLC. That's what I say about Singadaja. But definitely a place worth coming to. And of course, the dolphins, and I'm sure I'm forgetting so many other things. But yeah, it's just crazy how quiet it is. Oh, and by the way, that first coconut place this morning, it was closed. But found another one right here. Very simple. Got a coconut. Should always cost you like about a dollar. That's about the price of a coconut. Usually less for the local people, but just so you guys know, because they will jack up the price for you when they see that you're a bule, which means tourist. Um, but now on that note, I'm gonna find a cafe and... Um... Okay, so I finally found a place. This is the name of it. Beatrix looks like it's his name. And I will say being here in the, being here in the uh, northern part of Bali, the most difficult thing that I found of being here is it's hard to find cafes to work at. I think in a month of being here, we found maybe four that we could work at that had Wi-Fi and all that. So the struggle is real in that area. But other than that, um, yeah, north of Bali, much different, a lot less tourists. Um, hope I could show you guys while trying to get you all to, or get 17 of you guys to join me. I hope that um, I was able to show you guys a little bit as well of up here in Singalaja, two, kind of two in one video. And on that note, as I'm here in Beatrix, I wanna thank you guys for being here. Thank you guys for watching. All of you guys who have questions, comments, thank you guys all who are encouraging me and sending me emails and IG messages and TikToks and all these different things. Thank you so much. And hope to see you, hope to see you in Project Start starting on the 15th of March. Thank you for being here. I'll speak to you guys later. And in the meantime, everyone always remember to work hard, be brave, and don't forget to smile. Ciao.